This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and today is the 4th of July, Independence Day in the United States, where we are currently celebrating the 241st anniversary of the 13 colonies declaring that they were a new nation independent of the British Empire. And I wanted to come up with an appropriate way to mark this occasion, so I figured a good way to do that would be for me, an American lock picker, to pick a British lock. So I went through my collection looking for a British lock I've not shown you before, and I came up with this Squire WS75, which is made in Britain, and how perfect is that? It even has the British flag on it. But then it occurred to me that you've seen me pick locks before, you've even seen me pick Squires before. That's not a good way to celebrate the 4th of July. I mean, after all, we are commemorating a declaration of war. Don't do that by picking a lock. How do we do in the United States for the 4th of July? We all get together, we have picnics, we set meat on fire, and we blow up fireworks. I mean, that is a good way to commemorate a declaration of war. So how do I live up to that on this channel? Then it occurred to me that this is a great opportunity for me to try something that I have always wanted to try out to see if I can blow open a lock with explosives. So here's what we're going to do. Given that we traditionally set off fireworks today, I figured I would use a traditional fireworks pyrotechnic mixture. So we are going to mix up a little bit of potassium perchlorate, 70%, with some two to three micron aluminum powder, 30% of that. I may add a little bit of fumed silica as well, which will do three things. First, it'll cut down on static, making this a safer operation. Second, it'll make it flow better, which I need it to flow quite well when we insert it into the lock. And finally, it makes the mixture burn much, much faster. Once we have that done, we're going to take this lock and we're going to insert through this tiny little hole here that's why we need it to flow well, probably roughly 50 milligrams of the mixture. After we have it in there, we're going to take this little igniter that I made just for the occasion, slip it through that crack as well, and finally, we're going to cap it off with a little bit of five minute epoxy. Now, the idea is that we want to blow this retainer cap right out of the lock. The only thing that's holding it in is a screw that comes right down here, and it's a pretty small screw. So everything around it is hardened steel. The lock body is hardened steel. The retainer plate's hardened steel. That screw is not. My hope is that that mixture will shear that screw right off, blow the retainer plate out, blow the lock core out, and allow us to open this lock. So once we have everything put together, what I'm going to do is insert this lock into a steel box that I put together just for this occasion. We have quarter inch steel plates welded all the way around and a one inch Lexan front for us to video through. After it is safe in there, I will attach the wires to this radio control fireworks igniter. And once I am safely behind some concrete, we'll use the radio control to set it off. So that's the plan. Will it work? I have absolutely no idea. But I'll tell you what, we're going to have a good time finding out. I'm not going to show you me putting everything together. I want to be able to concentrate on this, have, have really good safety practices, and I don't want to do this around a camera. So we're going to cut the video. I'm going to put everything together. And once we've got everything in the lock, we'll start up the video and the show will begin. It's a half hour later and everything seems to have gone according to plan. I mixed the powder up and it flowed perfectly into the gap between the core and retainer plate. Once the powder was in, I slid the igniter into place and capped everything off with a five minute epoxy. The epoxy is there to ensure that the pressure builds such that there's enough force to shear that screw and knock the retainer plate out. Will it work? I have no idea, but we are about to find out. Stop. 
Success, my friends, though certainly not with my filming technique. What had happened was I duct taped the camera to the one inch thick Lexan plate that covered one side of the box. Now that Lexan plate stayed firmly in place. However, apparently the shock wave traveled through the material and was powerful enough to rip the duct tape off and send my camera flying 10 feet in the other direction. What that means is as soon as we triggered the event, unfortunately, you lost your view. However, when the smoke cleared, what you see in front of you is what was laying in the bottom of the box. I did not disassemble anything. This is how it was in there. The one thing I did do, however, is clean off a layer of sooty grease that covered absolutely everything. So let me take you through what we've got here. First, the lock body, which is relatively intact as, as we expected. However, now this shackle will freely open. And that's because all of the internals blew out the side of the lock. The only internals other than the shackle that are left in here are, are the small detent and detent spring that sit right here and keep us from fully removing the shackle and half of a screw that used to hold this retainer plate in. If you want the other half, you'll have to look at this little shard of the retainer plate where you can see that screw was cleanly and violently sheared off. The rest of the retainer plate lays in little shards right here, though as I look at it, I think we're probably missing a piece or two, though where they are, I have no idea. Then we get to the core here, and it is quite mangled as well. The Bible is somewhat S-shaped, and you can see the top cover was completely blown off. Even worse, the pressure was so great that it actually formed the brass into the pinholes, which is absolutely remarkable. In addition, if we look at the keyway, you can see it's been squeezed together such that it is now too narrow to accept a key. And that's even more pronounced on the back. Next, we have this, this actuator. And as it sits in the lock, these two pieces would be just like this. The actuator is in perfect shape. It's a solid piece of steel. However, it is now permanently scorched. The final piece that we have is the locking lug, and that has no damage at all. As it would normally sit in the lock, it'd be right about here, though I suspect after all the rest of the internals came out, this was free just to drop out the bottom. So, as you can see, this experiment was a resounding success, and I think a great way to celebrate Independence Day. I was actually a little bit scared that we weren't gonna have enough of the pyrotechnic mixture in there to blow it apart. I kept asking my advisors, 50 milligrams, are you sure that's enough? Especially once I saw it, it's really a tiny amount. And they just laughed at me and said, yeah, we're good to go, don't worry about it. I of course worried because I only had one lock and we had one take at this. Turns out my worries were unfounded. But that brings me to the next point. This video was created with the planning, guidance, supervision, and help of law enforcement officers trained in the safe handling of these materials. They set up my procedures and all of my safety protocols. In addition, we used an absolutely tiny bit of this pyrotechnic mixture. 50 milligrams is a very small amount, and you can see the carnage that resulted. I have a newfound respect for so-called low explosives. So I can't stress this enough. Do not try this at home because there is a really good chance that you'll hurt yourself or others. Besides, if you watch my channel, you know it's way easier and way faster just to pick the darn lock open. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you very much for joining me for this special episode. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below and have a fun and safe Independence Day. Bye-bye.